Carl Azus. Thank you for watching this Tuesday. Today's coverage on CNN 10 starts with a natural disaster taking place in southern Asia. Parts of Kerala, a state in southern India, are underwater. The rainy season, brought on by the seasonal monsoons, was worse this year than it usually is. Indian officials say some parts of Kerala received more than twice the amount of rainfall that they usually do. And that's caused the worst flooding the state has seen in almost a century. Over the past couple weeks, the rivers that cross Kerala swelled out onto the land nearby, ruining hundreds of thousands of homes. More than 300 people have been killed in the flooding. There are some areas where there are no visible roads, just water. And some of that is filled with sewage with immense potential to cause infection. Fishermen have come in by the thousands to help rescue people. They've brought their own boats, using them around the clock until they're too damaged to sail anymore. And they say that even some of those who need help, those whose homes have been inundated with water, have been reluctant to leave either because they don't trust the would-be rescuers or they're concerned that their homes would be robbed once they left them. Conditions for people in some of the shelters aren't much better. Rescuers can only reach the most desperate by boat and by air. People left stranded by raging waters by the thousands. No house is left here. No house is left here. Almost all the houses are flooded. It's currently four feet water has come down in this particular place. And when we get inside, still you cannot walk. You need a boat or something like that. Emergency workers, among them the Indian Air Force and the National Disaster Response Force, must navigate the washed out roads to deliver supplies, a hand, any help they can give. On the day we deployed here, and the situation was very horrifying. Almost 10 feet to 6 feet, and you can find water everywhere. There are water and water and everywhere, nothing else. Uh, but uh, today, if we speak, the water is depleting. The level is coming down and down. Uh, but uh, the main work will start now. The Indian state of Kerala is now a disaster zone. Food is airdropped to those who can't be reached. The injured and traumatized taken to hospitals. Days of deadly landslides and flash floods brought devastation worse than any they've seen before, even here. The thing is right now, the flood which we are experiencing right now is, is horrible. We never had such a chaos situation. Every, flood, every house is filled in the water. Hundreds of thousands who have reached shelters are still in need. The thing is, there's no toilet over here, okay? There's nothing, no, no sanitation, basic sanitation thing over here. There's no drinking water over here. We have no drinking water. Uh, the water issue is uh, the primary. Uh, that's also a primary concern. Every year, millions of tourists visit Kerala, drawn by its rivers, its natural beauty. Its natural disaster has now claimed hundreds of lives. Alexandra Field, CNN. An ominous statistic just came out from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. It suggests that more Americans died of drug overdoses in 2017 than in any other year in U.S. history. 72,000 people are believed to have died last year from drug overdoses. And this is according to the CDC's preliminary data, which is still incomplete for some states. That might mean that the actual number of overdose deaths is even higher. The last record year for this was the one before, 2016. And over the past 10 years, the CDC says the number of overdose deaths has doubled. As far as 2017 goes, more than two-thirds of overdose deaths are being blamed on opioids. These can include everything from the painkillers that doctors prescribe to illegal heroin to synthetic chemicals like fentanyl, which is incredibly potent, tightly controlled, but still illegally sold, sometimes as a counterfeit drug for something that appears less dangerous. Most of the prescription drugs that are abused are obtained from family and friends often from their medicine cabinets. That's according to an assistant professor at the University of Florida College of Pharmacy. Some states are trying to deal with this by limiting doctors' ability to prescribe opioids. Some communities are making sure their first responders always carry opioid antidotes that can save the life of someone who overdoses. Every 19 minutes, someone dies from an accidental drug overdose. Most of the time, it's from prescription drugs like oxycodone or hydrocodone. These drugs all belong to a family of drugs called opioids. They are prescribed to dull pain, but they also boost dopamine, giving some people a high. They can also slow down your breathing and are highly addictive. So why is it so easy to get hooked? 
Well, for one, your body can build up a tolerance so that the more you use, the larger dose you need to get the same effect. Secondly, you can become dependent on them. In fact, your body creates natural opioids that are released when you hurt yourself. But if you habitually use painkillers, your body stops producing its own and relies on the drugs instead. If you try and stop then, the body goes through withdrawal. Consider this, in 2012, there were 259 million prescriptions written for opioid painkillers, nearly enough for every American adult and child to have their own bottle of pills. Look, we need to treat pain, but we also don't need to treat everything with the pill. 10 second trivia. Which of these American companies is the oldest? U.S. Steel, Ford, General Electric, or Walmart? General Electric was created in 1892, making it the oldest company on this list. General Electric, GE. We bring good things to life. You probably know the company best for its most famous invention, the incandescent light bulb. Since its founding, the company has invented thousands of products and changed American life in the process. Just think about all the items in your kitchen that GE had a hand in. GE rolled out the first electric toaster in 1905. They sold the first widely used refrigerator. They repurposed a technology used in World War II to invent the microwave. And it's not just appliances. They also were responsible for the first American jet engine, the x-ray machine, even the lab-grown diamond. In its nearly 130 years of business, GE has reinvented transportation, medical technology, and the domestic realm. But in recent years, it's hit a snag. Its stock performed so poorly, it was booted from the Dow. It's had to cut jobs, its dividends, even sold off some of its most iconic businesses. Some analysts say that GE's problem is that it's too complex. It has its fingers in too many different industries. GE has said that it will simplify and restore itself to icon status. General Electric marches on. But its recent troubles have some wondering if its future isn't so bright. now and then movie cars, rare and exciting vehicles made famous by the films they were in, come up for sale. A Ghostbusters ambulance was once on the market for $200,000, same price for the Batmobile used in the 1966 TV show. One little problem with the $3.5 million Aston Martin you're about to see, you can't legally drive it on the street. You'll be using this Aston Martin DB5 with modifications. Now, pay attention, please. Windscreen bulletproof, as are the side and the rear windows. Revolving number plates, naturally. Valid all countries. Anything else? Oh sure, some fans have a bond with it, and you'd need more than a gold finger to buy it. But if you're asking me, you Martin look elsewhere if you've got the drive to actually drive the car you were driven to buy. Being street illegal is a major stop sign because you'll never find out if it goes zero to 60 in 007 seconds. I'm Carl Azus, and that's CNN 10.